Okay, gene expression and control. In this lesson, we're going to uh, talk mainly about, actually only about, the gene expression part. So that is the transcription section here and the translation section. Uh, before we get into all the details, just a quick overview of the processes that we'll be talking about. And just remind you that the overall goal here is to go from the DNA, which holds the genetic information, to the protein, which sort of is the expression of that genetic information. Uh, and there are two basic steps that are involved here. And the first will be transcription, and that is the process of going from DNA, which is here in the nucleus of a eukaryotic cell, and copying that information into a molecule of RNA. And there are a few different types of RNA here. Uh, messenger RNA is shown. And that messenger RNA can then leave the nucleus and can then undergo the second process of translation, which is taking that information which has been copied into the RNA molecule and using it to create a protein. So all of these processes, and this uh, sort of goes over all three, the transcription, translation, and replication of DNA, which we talked about previously, all rely on the base pairing between the nucleotides. Okay, remember the A and T base pairs and the GC base pairs. And if we could just bring that back a little bit so we can see all the different things that happen here. And this, all these figures, again, are replicated in uh, your textbooks. And here we see some examples of these base pairing uh, processes during DNA replication. Uh, the DNA is copied based on the base pairings and, ma and it makes an exact copy of the DNA. Uh, when it's made into mRNA, the sequence of the RNA molecule is complementary again to the template strand. The bottom strand here is acting as the template strand. And you may notice here these U's. Uh, we will talk about those in uh, the transcription section. But the base pairing is exactly the same. Uh, and this concept of codons we'll come back to. And then in the tRNA, which is another type of RNA involved in translation, uh, there is base pairing here between the anticodons in the tRNA and the codons in the mRNA. And then eventually we get down to protein, which are made up obviously of amino acids. So how do we get from nucleotides to amino acids? We have to use this genetic code. Uh, it's sort of a, a translation book, sort of, of how to get from the language of nucleic acids, the four bases here listed as U, C, A, and G instead of T into the language of amino acids, the 20 different amino acids. And it, the codon is simply a series of three nucleotides in a row, which codes for a certain amino acid. So for example, the first one here, U, 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 uh, three uracil bases in a row, would code for the amino acid phenylalanine. Okay, and this looks very complex and very confusing. Uh, you will not need to know that, uh, what I do want you to focus on is some of the overall aspects of the code. Uh, the fact that it's three nucleotides, and that's called a codon. Uh, and each codon specifies for a specific amino acid. And there are some special codons. Uh, the start codon, AUG, and the three stop codons. And their functions will come back uh, when we talk about translation. And here you see the start codon. Uh, the reason that I highlighted that is because that is the only one you need to remember. AUG is always the start codon. Every single protein starts with AUG. Okay, well, let's take a step back real quick, and let's take a look at how do we even get to beginning of the beginning of this process. How do we make RNA, the transcription? Okay, there are three main types of RNA found in the cell. mRNA, which is a messenger RNA, rRNA, or ribosomal RNA, and tRNA, or transfer RNA. And all of these are made through the same process of transcription. 
And this just kind of shows a picture of the three types of RNA. Uh, real quick comparison between DNA molecules and RNA molecules. Uh, DNA, as you remember, is double-stranded. RNA is single-stranded. The sugar is a little bit different. Uh, in DNA, it's deoxyribose, whereas in RNA, it's ribose, and that's why it's called RNA. R for ribose, D for deoxyribose. The bases are a little bit different. Um, in RNA, there are four bases again, but thymine, T in DNA has been replaced with uracil, U in RNA. Uh, the base pairing rules are the same here, with the exception that whenever there's a T uh, in RNA, it will be replaced by with replaced with a U. So U and A will form base pairs instead of T and A. Each type of RNA has a specific function. Okay, messenger RNA, mRNA, is what carries the genetic information from the nucleus to the cytoplasm. Uh, tRNA, uh, transfer RNA, uh, kind of think of that as the translator molecule because it reads the genetic code in the mRNA molecule and brings the correct amino acid to the party and adds it uh, to, to the growing protein chain. And rRNA, ribosomal RNA, is found within the ribosomes and really does a, a number of different uh, functions inside the ribosome, which are not overly important for this class. Just know that that's where it's found. So the key players uh, in transcription. There's one enzyme called RNA polymerase that both unwinds the DNA helix uh, remember, that was the job of DNA helicase during replication, and it also builds the new RNA molecule, and that job was done by DNA polymerase during replication. So RNA polymerase, one enzyme, does both of these jobs here. And you will also obviously need a piece of DNA to be expressed. And there's three basic steps in, in transcription. Excuse me: Initiation, elongation, and finally termination. So the first step, initiation. There, here we have a region of three genes, uh, and we, we are going, this cell is going to be actively expressing gene number three here. So RNA polymerase binds to this special re region of the DNA right before the gene called a promoter. Okay, and we will talk more about these promoter regions when we get to the gene expression control section. Okay, so the RNA polymerase binds to this promoter region, and that forms sort of the initiation complex. And then it moves into the elongation stage. When the RNA polymerase travels along the DNA template strand and makes the RNA molecule, adding RNA nucleotides one by one based on the base pairing rules. And remember that since we are making a RNA molecule here, it will be adding U's instead of T's. Okay, always remember to put U's in the RNA molecules. Then the final stage, termination, which is quite simple. Uh, there is a special, again, a special sequence on the DNA called a termination signal. Uh, RNA polymerase reads that and knows to stop. So that falls obviously at the end of the gene and everything kind of falls apart. DNA goes back to its original state. DNA is unchanged during transcription and the RNA transcript is now released and is free to go about the cell and do its job, whatever that job may be. Uh, there's a few differences between prokaryotes, the bacteria and archaea domains, and eukaryotes in terms of how transcription works. The main difference being that since, pro, since prokaryotes have no nuclear membrane, their DNA is just kind of floating around in the cell, uh, transcription and translation can happen at the same time. It's called coupled transcription and translation. And here we kind of see that happening. We have a piece of DNA with RNA polymerase moving along it, mRNA, sort of the red molecule here coming out, 
And as soon as that mRNA kind of gets free of the RNA polymerase molecule enough, ribosomes start to bind to it and protein uh, is beginning, being expressed. Oh, here we go, a little bit closer look at it. And this is what this would actually look like in the cell. Uh, this is an electron micrograph. Here's the piece of DNA. And you can see uh, the mRNA is kind of hanging off. You can kind of see it right in here between the ribosomes. Okay, so this all happens all at the same time. And the other thing, the other way that makes prokaryotes and eukaryotes different is that in prokaryotes, bacteria and archaea, you know, the genes tend to be grouped together by function. So you have one region of, of the genome which has all the genes for one specific pathway, one specific function. Uh, in eukaryotes, you really don't see that. Genes are just kind of spread all over the place, wherever they could find room. Um, in eukaryotes, so this is all the other kingdoms, fungi, protists, plants, animals, you know, all those guys that, that we know and love. Uh, the gene structure is a little bit different, a little bit more complex. Uh, the DNA has these intervening sequences called introns, which do not actually code for any part of the protein. Uh, they're just sort of there uh, in between the exons or the expressed sequences. And these exons are what actually code for important stuff. Uh, a lot of theories about why the eukaryotes have these introns, and they are very, very well conserved over all eukaryotic kingdoms. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit about that when we get into gene expression control. Um, so obviously, the RNA will have to be processed before it's expressed. We can't have these um, non-coding regions put into your sequence. It'd be like reading a book, and it's then in the middle of a sentence, there would, there's just all this these random words put in that don't make any sense. Um, so RNA splicing occurs. Uh, that is the removal of the introns. And the exons, the kind of the pink sections here, the lighter pink sections, are spliced together. So they are put back together. And the other important thing that happens before RNA is expressed in eukaryotes is that a cap is put at the beginning and a tail sequence is put at the end. And if we have time in class, we will talk a little bit more about these sequences and why they are put on the ends. Okay, I'm not going to go over the YouTube video right now. You can watch that on your own. So now we have our, in, our RNA molecule made. What do we want to do with it? In the case of an mRNA molecule, we are going to translate it. And that means we are going to take the information and build a protein from it. So what do we need to do that? We need the M mRNA sequence, obviously, because that has the instructions. Uh, we'll need a whole bunch of tRNA molecules and the amino acids linked to them. Okay, tRNA and amino acids can bond together in very specific ways, and they tRNA functions to bring the correct amino acid following that genetic code uh, we showed before. And we'll obviously, and we will need also need a ribosome, which if you you should remember from earlier when we did cells, that the ribosome is the organelle that makes proteins. So now we're going to see how exactly it does that. Okay, just like in transcription, there are three stages to translation. That they are initiation, elongation, and termination. It seems like there's a lot going on here with tr translation, but it's really, it all kind of makes sense if you just kind of think about it and just kind of let it sort of happen and think about what has to happen. All right, so let's get into it. First thing, uh, this initiation complex is formed, uh, and that forms from a small ribosomal subunit. Okay, ri ribosomes are made up of two parts, a small and a large subunit, okay, very imaginatively named. Uh, this one is the smaller piece, obviously. Um, there is a tRNA here, a, sp a particular tRNA for that codes for methionine. Okay, uh, that is the first amino acid in every protein. And that tRNA here you can see is bound to the methionine uh, amino acid. Then the mRNA to be expressed comes in and the first codon in the mRNA, which is AUG, remember that is the always the start codon, 
base pairs with the anticodon on the initiator tRNA. So AUG base pairs to UAC. Once that is, once the mRNA comes in, then the large ribosomal subunit comes in. And now we have an active ribosome ready to begin translation. A few things to look at here in the ribosome. Uh, there are two sort of binding sites in the RNA. Uh, the first binding site here is called the P site, and the second one over here is called the A site. Okay, and there's also this site up here, the catalytic site, and that is the site which actually has the catalytic activity to form the proteins. Okay, so we have the mRNA, we have the first tRNA ready to go in the P site, and the ribosome all made, Let's make a protein. So elongation. The first thing that happens, the second amino acid in the chain, in the protein, is brought in to the A site of the large ribosomal subunit. And through base pairing, okay, the second codon is GUU. The second anticodon then must be CAA. So we know that this is the correct amino acid. So the catalytic site then catalyzes the formation of this peptide bond. So the methionine, which was originally bound to this tRNA molecule here, is now moved over to here and is now bonded by this very strong covalent bond to the second amino acid, which in this case is valine. Okay. The P site here now has an empty tRNA molecule, and the A site now has two amino acids. Now the ribosome kind of shifts down by one codon. So the codon, GUU, that was lined up under the A site before is now lined up under the P site. Uh, the empty tRNA leaves the ribosome and it can go out and find another methionine amino acid and recharge itself and to be used later. Uh, and now the A site is now empty and it is ready to accept the next amino acid tRNA complex. Okay, and again through base pairing, you know that this is the right amino acid. This is the one that's being coded for by the protein. Um, catalytic site does this magic again. And now, in the A site, we now have an amino acid chain that is three amino acids long, okay? And the P site is now empty again. And this process will just continue on and on, adding every amino acid that is coded for by the mRNA until it reaches one of those three stop codons, okay? And that tells the ribosome that this is the end of the protein so what happens uh, with termination, the stop codon lines up under the A site. There is no corresponding tRNA that has the correct anticodon for this codon, uh, any of the three stop codons, which you will not need to memorize. Just remember, just remember, just need to remember the start codon for methionine. So that tells the ribosome that it's done. Uh, there's, there is actually a protein which comes in and helps this happen, uh, but ev everything kind of falls apart, and the protein is left to, to go about its job, and the ribosomal subunits kind of fall apart, um, and th they can then go on and reform on another piece of mRNA. They may even go back to the beginning of this piece of mRNA and translate it again. Okay, there are usually multiple ribosomes on each mRNA molecule making protein copies. And again, we're not going to watch that. Uh, this gene regulation part, I'm not going to get into right now. We will talk about that in at a later lesson. Uh, so for right now, I think just looking at the transcription and translation going, <clears throat> excuse me, going from DNA to RNA in transcription, and then from RNA to protein in translation is enough for now.